Hello makers! So, it's almost Christmas time and some of you may be looking to gift a 3D printer to someone of the younger generation. Let's say you want something that is affordable, something that is easy to use, um, and something that is reliable. So, you might want to stick around because today I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the FlashForge Finder. So FlashForge have been around for quite some time now and it always intrigued me, it always interested me to actually try out a FlashForge but I never really had the chance. So recently FlashForge reached out to me and asked me if I'm willing to review the uh, the FlashForge Finder which is this machine right here. Now the, the Finder is the entry level version of all the FlashForge printers so it's a PLA only machine and to be completely honest having an eight year old daughter almost turning nine now, very important that, that, that I say that because you know, I'll, I'll get told off. But having an almost nine year old daughter uh, who is really into 3D printing, I, I also want to give her something that she can tinker by herself with that is safe enough to use, won't require a lot of my attention, and even when it comes to slicing, something that just makes life easier. And then comes the FlashForge Finder. It has a build volume of 140 by 140 by 140 millimeters, so it's not exactly a small build volume. It comes completely pre-assembled with very very few things that you need to do in order to get it up and running. You'll have all the tools that you need within the packaging. You also have a little spool of filament with about 300 grams in it so it gives you quite a bit of printing right from the get-go. You have the usual manuals, the cables that you need, you also have a USB stick uh, with some pre-sliced files on it and also the software that you'd need. Now there are quite a few things which kind of really surprised me about the flash Forge Finder. Um, the first one is that it has a really solid frame. The construction, the build quality of this printer is actually quite impressive for its size and price range. It has a removable build plate. It's not a heated bed because it's a PLA only machine, but it really does the job well. It comes with a full color touchscreen, which is extremely easy to use. It's very responsive and intuitive. It also has a compartment for the spool holder. So it's completely enclosed and self-contained. Now, I do have to mention that the spools that the Flash Floor Finder houses inside itself are not standard size, they're slightly smaller in diameter and also thinner um, from normal spools. So if you do want to print with filament outside of what FlashForge offer, then you definitely need to get a spool holder, which will still work as I will show you very soon. The drawer which houses the spool holder also has a run out filament sensor. So there, that's one major surprise that I actually had. The other thing is the assisted auto bed leveling. So it has a servo which lets down a limit switch it guides you through the whole process of leveling the bed so first you'd simply need to tighten the three screws under the bed once that's done the leveling process starts and once you start undoing the screws on the bed and the bed starts lifting it will give you a very loud noise to let you know that that's when you have to stop. And it's actually quite accurate because ultimately, once you set it, that's it, you're done. Um, you can start printing right away. I also need to mention that the printer is Wi-Fi enabled, so you don't really need the, uh, the USB stick in order to print. You can actually send everything through Wi-Fi. So once you install the FlashForge Finder uh, slicer, which is very easy to use, it's not over complicated in terms of it doesn't have too many things that you need to adjust. You have the usual layer height, you have the infill percentage, whether you want a brim or a raft, uh, you have the speed and the temperature, which are, to someone who's just starting out, that's all that matters. Um, you, you don't wanna get too intricate and sort of like complicate things. And to be completely honest, my daughter is very happy with those settings. She knows what needs to be changed and what doesn't need to be changed. And most of the time I preset the profile for her and all she does is downloads any models that she wants and just slices them. The, the usual question is, does this require support or not? And that's it. The rest will be up to the FlashForge Finder. Um, you can simply transfer it via Wi-Fi onto the machine itself as it does have some memory stored inside and it starts printing. And I gotta say, the print quality was quite superb so the test print that was on the sd card 
was this benchy look-alike kind of thing. It does have a little bit of stringing, but I kind of ignore that for the simple fact that is this is pre-sliced, so I couldn't do anything. This was just the first test print, but it printed out really great, so I was quite happy with the result. Then I decided to slice something myself, so I slice this blink fox. Now, as I was slicing this, I noticed that I can also change the color of the light inside of the Flash Forge Finder, which, while it might be a nuisance to many, I, I think I spent at least 10 minutes trying to figure out which color I wanted. So we settled on pink. Now, the one thing, the one setting that I wish there was, but there wasn't, um, on the slicer of Flash Forge is the retraction distance. Um, because that kind of told me that that would be the problem with the stringing that I saw. So I threw in the Blink Fox, I sliced it, I shot it over Wi-Fi and it started printing. And unfortunately, the first test print, I like I, the, the print started lifting off the bed and then I realized that I forgot to put some glue. They do give you also um, this, it looks purple, but once you lay it down, it started, becomes transparent. And it actually works really well with the bed that they supply. So I started again and this was the result. And the result, I have to say, absolutely great. Keep in mind that this is a PLA only machine. Most of the PLA only machines I've tried didn't even have a cooling fan with them. So the print quality was quite impressive um, for the kind of machine that it is. It handles overhangs very well. The layer uh, consistency is actually quite good. I'm, I'm really happy with the performance of the machine. So. Yeah, I was definitely impressed. Um, so then I reached out to Flashforge and I asked them, listen, is it okay for me to use any other PLA other than Flashforge? Because I don't want to ruin the warranty of the printer and I want to give, I don't want to give out the wrong information. And they told me, yes, you can go ahead and use other PLA. This is the Strong Hero Rainbow PLA. And this is Christmas. I thought I'd print something Christmassy. This was the result. Now, I also noticed that the um, the preset temperature for PLA is 110. Now, in this case, what I did was I reduced the temperature to 200 because I know that's more than enough for the speeds that it prints. And then this happened and this, I was actually really impressed with this. Not only are the layers very consistent, this was printed at 0.18 millimeter layer height but it's actually very very clean for a print it's really clean not only that if you look at the top the circle or the hole where you sort of pause the string to actually tie this to something <laughs> a christmas tree possibly it's actually really clean it's very round and that's that's almost very hard to achieve with many printers and i noticed that the cooling on this it's actually from, from the back and both sides. So we have actually very good cooling on the, uh, on the printed part. As a first experience, I got to say, I was, I was totally blown away. I was extremely happy with how easy it is to set up, to start printing, to slice. It's not over complicated. It feels reliable and it, it has quite a few features, which which always help. Currently on, on Amazon, I think it's about $299 in Amazon US. It's probably slightly a bit more on Amazon UK, but for that price, it's definitely a machine that in, in my opinion, once again, my opinion uh, based on my experience or my daughter's experience, it's definitely something I would recommend as a Christmas present to someone who really wants to get into 3D printing doesn't want to be overwhelmed, doesn't want kits, uh, want, want something pre-assembled, easy, decent enough build volume and PLA only, PLA only is fine. Then trust me, make sure you take a look at the Flashforge Finder. So when Flashforge contacted me to review the Flashforge Finder, I did ask them if I can donate the machine to a local school here in Malta because I felt that it could be of good use there. And they were generous enough to actually tell me Okay, we'll send you two, donate one, just use the other one, do a couple of projects. So I do have a few projects in mind for this. And once I'm done with that, I'll also donate this to a local school. Um, my daughter, she has more than enough 3D printers. It would definitely be of better use or more productive use if I can donate these to schools um, who will make good use of them and sort of spark the creativity of children. So if you're one of those that you want to incentivize someone to get into 3D printing at a young age, this is definitely one to look for.
That is it for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Disclaimer, as always, uh, Flash Force sent me this 3D printer and some filament to do this review and a couple of other projects, plus the other 3D printer to give out as a donation to some local schools at no expense. I was not paid to do this review. Each and every single thought that I um, that I said in this review is my own based on my experience. As for the rest, if you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and as always, 